you were living in Canada when all of this got yep. started. So explain uh -huh. explain that. You're living in Canada. How does uh, your case wind up in front of Judge Hall, who is a judge in California? Well, um, my husband decided to file for divorce in California using a UPS mailbox address in Marina del Rey as his California residence. And this was accepted by it was Judge Tamara Hall. This it was, was Judge Tamara Hall who accepted it. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, I... Okay. Okay. But, um, uh, and he he did this, I think, ex, it's called ex parte. Well, you weren't ex there. Ex parte? Right. You, were, you, yeah. were you there when he made this argument? No. No. So I was in you, Canada. This was in chambers. Were you there, were you ever in front of Judge Hall before she issued this or the order barring you from seeing your kids? No. Okay, so everything was done without you, and you said he, he did it in her chambers. The, yes. Okay, so... And the reason when, why I know... Go ahead. The reason why I know is there's no court reporter present, mm -hmm. and there's no um, transcript from the proceedings. Okay, that's how you know it was in chambers. Uh, w with as much detail as you can remember, what does the order state? It states um, that the child has to return to the United States, that the um, passport has to be handed over uh, to um, my husband's attorney, mm -hmm. and uh, that there would be no contact with the mother, no visits with the respondent. I think that was the actual word she said. Mm -hmm. uh, she basically um, switched custody, mm -hmm. granting my husband um, sole legal and physical custody and no contact to me, mm -hmm. even though she had zero jurisdiction because you my, husband, my you, husband... You and your husband my husband at the time had been living in Canada. He went to That's California, right. and the only thing he had was this P.O. box. Uh, now, when, how quickly before you were made aware of this order? Um, I was made aware of this um, less than 24 hours before it was, I, I should say, I was aware of the ex parte mm -hmm. um, less than 24 hours before she issued it. So I didn't have even enough time to fly to California mm -hmm. to, to, to even go to the hearing. So they... When I say without notice or opportunity to be heard, because if you're going to sue somebody from another country, you have to go under the Hague Convention mm -hmm. um, on the, you know, um, service of broad of judicial and extrajudicial documents um, in civil and commercial matters. It's a really long mm -hmm. thing. Um, so it, it, it's quite involved. And it takes like a couple of months at least it, it, if you get everything expedited. Um, and most of the, and in this particular case, it wouldn't have even been accepted by uh, the U.S. State Department because um, because we live in a another country. That was that's pretty obvious, right? Um, I should say that my husband filled out the form, the UCCJEA form, which is for the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act, and he states that we live, that my son lives with mom and dad in Vancouver, Canada. So the one thing that Judge Tamara Hall would have in front of her to determine whether she had jurisdiction or not, he actually admitted, we live in Canada. Mm -hmm. they, but at the same time, during that same time frame, he writes underneath our Canadian address, he writes the UPS mailbox in Marina Del Rey, and he says that our son only lives with him at that mailbox. At the mailbox. So, now, when you when you were made aware that this order, well, that, that, that there was this order, what, what did you try to do legally? Okay, so um, I contacted um, this, um, what is it, uh, like a non-profit, in LA, just right close to the courthouse, and I asked them to pull the file because I hadn't been served. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. I was not even served with the order. So 
they um, did that and they were able to find out what happened. I had no idea what even happened. Um, and then, because on the order it states that there's a date 21 days later for me to show up to court. Of course, I wasn't served with any of this. Um, but because I, my husband was texting me saying, ha ha, the courts of California think you kidnapped Hunter, because that's what he did. He went in and claimed that I had kidnapped him to Canada, even though we were, living, we were living there. And he's still on the lease and he had imported our car to Canada and everything. Like, you gotta be kidding me. But he left me with $18 in my bank account and a $5,000 a month overhead and no way to pay it. And then filed for divorce um, in California using this UPS mailbox. So, um, yeah, I, I, okay, so what, then then um, I found out about this hearing, and I stupidly, I, I had hired an attorney in Canada, and the stupid attorney told me, oh, go to California. So then I go into the, um, um, to the hearing, of course, and um, I filed a special appearance declaration mm -hmm. stating that I don't accept the jurisdiction of the court. Mm -hmm. That declaration was never acknowledged. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, well, you're here now. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay. we're not understanding that, like, so you she, know. So after you were able to be heard, she ratified, or however you want to say it, the order that she had previously filed. Is that right? That's, oh, yeah, well, actually. Okay. Uh, that's, that's yeah, no, no, so that's exactly you, what happened, yes. Go ahead, what, what exactly happened? Um. I have to think here. Oh yes, she she then said, okay, because um, it was a Friday. She said, I want you to come back in five days with your son. And she did this. She ordered this at like three thirty in the afternoon on a Friday. She also switched custody temporarily, granted me custody for. Um, just a minute, I guess, just for the purposes of going to get my son and bringing him to Canada, uh, sorry, to California. Mm -hmm. And now, at that point, I realized there's a judge ordering me to do something. Um, so I stupidly went back to Canada and I brought my son down to California because mm -hmm. I'm a dual national. So I'm thinking, I can explain this. Like, no, you know, mm -hmm. I, I gave all the paperwork, proof that we live in Canada. I'm thinking, okay, as long as I just, you know, prove I didn't kidnap my son and I just do as, as the judge says, especially because that's what my attorney told me to do, and, you know. Um, uh, what she did was she ordered that I was never allowed to uh, return to Canada with my son. Mm -hmm. I was allowed to go back to Canada, but not with my son. Mm -hmm. And she ordered that I hand over my son's passport. And, um, and so I, you know, after the hearing, I had to go to... Um, um, to the hotel that we had been staying at, and I would handed my son over um, in in a hotel when, lobby, when and this? that was six and a half years ago. Okay, and that was so. When you appeal, I assume you appealed it. What what did the appeals court? Oh that? no, the the appeal is going on now. Okay, they've dragged this case out for so long, and it was always temporary orders, mm -hmm. temporary, temporary, temporary. And you know how you can't appeal a temporary you order appeal, now. And this was constantly Judge Hall doing this. No, so Judge Hall did this for the first year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, I should say, so after the first year, so this all happened in 2015, and then in 2016, um, uh, that's when we went in for the Hague Convention on the Civil Aspects of International Child Abduction, mm -hmm. and it was the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office that prepared a 148-page pleading for my son's return to Canada. Mm -hmm. But in, it's almost fateful, <laughs> in the, um, the pleadings, mm -hmm. the, the District Attorney states that mother and her attorney believe that Judge Hall acted without authority, mm -hmm. right? Which, now, if you're going to do this, mm -hmm. that that's basically stealing the judge's fate. So the presiding judge, sorry, the supervising judge of the Family Law Division was Judge Marin Nelson. Mm -hmm. She decided she was, she was going to um, do 
deny or even dismiss my Hague. Mm -hmm. I, I, or I actually think she said deny. Mm -hmm. So, and she stated, res judicata, the matter has already been heard. Mm -hmm. Only problem with that is, Judge Mary Nelson was the only judge permitted to hear Hague proceedings because it's, it's an international treaty. You know, the kid's supposed they, to be returned it seems immediately. Like these judges were using legal tricks to get around yeah. actually dealing with, uh, yeah. with the Yeah, and they're doing it knowingly. Well, you also got the State Department involved. What, what did the State Department yeah. tell you? Well, the State Department felt like their hands were tied because mm, uh, judge, this judge made a ruling. And so the, they were all the shocked. The State Department was telling you that a California judge had more power than the State Department. That's correct. Okay, and so um, how many years would you say these orders were temporary? They were temporary until last year. Okay, uh, and this, uh, when did Judge... Five years. So Judge Hall initially made this ruling in 2016 Right, 2015. 2000, so from 2015, a series of judges made temporary orders that, that uh, would you say, rubber stamped the initial temporary order and so the, the rest yeah, of the temporary Yeah, just order? continued the kidnapping orders, yeah. Okay, and how many judges, and do you remember, uh, uh, say how many you remember having and how many names do you, who are, whatever names you remember? Yes, it's, it was Judge Hall, then Judge Marin. Nelson was the supervising judge, and then it's Judge Riff, Judge Lawrence P. Riff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they all constantly rubber stamp the initial order. Um, That's right. And, and so, as a result, when was the last time you physically were in the same room as your son? Um, I got to see him three times. So the last time I saw him was October 25th. Uh, 2016. Okay, and then more recently, out of the blue, you are now able to, I think, through Zoom or whatever the platform is, yeah. homeschool your son. How did that come about? That came about because my um, husband, um, he's he wanted to stop me from pursuing the appeal. Mm -hmm. So he's basically been with, I have it all in text messages, he's extorting me mm -hmm. and blackmailing me and saying that, oh, you know, I just, you, there's no appeal, there's no appeal, you can't do the appeal, um, but I'll, I'll let you talk to him. So mm -hmm. I was able to um, file, a, um, a request another continuance mm -hmm. with, um, and they granted it until January 15th, mm -hmm. and I said, look, I'm really trying to... Um, uh, come to some kind of settlement with my husband, and you know, and so uh, and so then they just get granted. Your your husband would would let you homeschool your son through through Zoom or, or whatever you're using. Yeah. But only if you didn't follow through with the appeal. That's right. Okay. All right. And, but um, I am following through with the appeal because all I did was ask for a continuance. And I said to him, unless you put this in writing and we come up with a proper settlement agreement, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So you <laughs> still intend to, to follow through with the appeal, but for now, it's on hold. Absolutely. Now, it's on hold. Um, law enforcement got involved, but they didn't actually take action. Explain their involvement and why you would think they didn't take action. They didn't take action because um, when you kidnap a child to a foreign country, mm -hmm. um, it goes under the Hague Convention on the Civil Aspects of International Child Abduction. Mm -hmm. It's the shittiest treaty in the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It's mm -hmm. garbage. Mm -hmm. And it usually backfires against the left-behind parents because um, once you file a Hague, you're not allowed to file um, criminal charges. It's either one or the other. And actually, no, because we don't really have a choice. We're always supposed to go under the civil aspects. Mm -hmm. And I guess it has to do with the fact that very often when a parent kidnaps a child to a foreign country, they're able to dupe a judge over there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why they do civil aspects, because they're like, oh, judge, you must have made a little mistake, right? Mm -hmm. So, but what's, what's um, yeah, that's why. Um, so the police rely 
like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's under the Hague. Um, I, I was absolutely shocked when I didn't get my son back. Right, it being under the Hague, how, how does that stop them from pursuing uh, Judge Hall and, and your ex? Oh, um, th well, that's a very good question. I'd like to know. Claiming the li mind would like to know, because I've asked that question a thousand times. I'm like, no, right, she committed what, this what crime. If, what, what do they tell her? What, if anything, have they said? They don't respond. Okay. All right. So no law enforcement, whether it's local PD or the FBI or anyone else that you've gone to, has taken any action, and no one has really explained to you why no action is being taken. Actually, um, in 2017, I reported this to the FBI. Mm -hmm. They said, just go back in, you're in front of a new judge, be pro per. And I think they were convinced that this, you know, Judge Riff would do the right thing. Mm -hmm. No. So I went back in um, 2018, October 2018, to the FBI in Long Beach, mm -hmm. and they took 30 trial binders, 30 binders of evidence, and they have been investigating since. 2018. Wait, they said been, that it's going been, to. They've been investigating since 2018, but how many people have been indicted? Zero. Zero. Okay, but they, they, as last you know, the case is still open. Yes, they told me that a case never closes. Yes, unless, it never until closes, it closes. So it doesn't sound like anybody's taking any action. So for summing up, your, uh, is it your ex-husband? Are you guys legally divorced yet or not? I, we're not tech, I mean, so according to the California, still, we're technically, still, technically he's still your husband. Your husband walked yeah. into a California courtroom knowing full well that his residence was in Canada, claimed his residence was in California based on a UPS PO box, convinced their judge mm -hmm. in chambers to give, grant him temporary sole custody to bar you from seeing your son. You were then ordered by the same judge to go to California and then order to go back to Canada to bring your son. Uh, that was the last time you saw your son, and then a succession of temporary orders kept that initial order by Judge Hall in place. Different judges essentially rubber stamped that order. When when was a final order made that you could appeal? Um, that was in um, July 2020. And do you remember the judge who made that final order? Yeah, that's Judge Riff. Judge Riff. Judge. And then that allows you to appeal. When you threatened to appeal, all of a sudden, that's when your uh, when your husband wanted to work something out. Am I getting everything right? Well, yeah. So he didn't in the beginning, though. So I filed in 2020, and it was only 2021, a whole year later, when he realized that I had gotten an extension until September. I asked for my first extension. Mm -hmm. That's when he contacted me and said, oh, you know, um, and, and I got an extension until January um, 15th after that because he, he wanted to prevent me from filing my opening brief in September, like a couple of months ago. So that's why in July he just um, July broke down and said... So just in the last few months yeah. is when you finally yeah, started that's right. 